What's up everyone? We are back with this league's starter tips and tricks video series. This is going to be the part one of a series. So make sure you get subscribed, throw down a like and a comment if any of these tips helped you and let's jump into it. First thing we're going to talk about is how you refresh your current trades to make it so that if you are hurting for something and you just need a quick sale, let's use this for example, say I really need some chaos. I'm going to sell this at a super, super aggressive price. Let's say 146. You can go in and you can list it for 146. And then what you are going to do to make sure it hits the chat as quickly as possible is go to the menagerie. This sends the API to the trade website and it will put the trade even faster on there. So if you do that, it'll make sure that those aggressive trades that maybe you don't want to start a map or do something like that will hit the trade even faster and if it's competitive enough you will get spammed pretty quickly now the second tip also having to do with trade now there are a lot of kind of advanced things you can do when you're adding stat filters to say if not this then that and all that but i think the main thing that people don't use enough is the tilde key with these stat filters what the tilde key is it's to the left of the one key on a standard keyboard, it's hard to tell that this is a tilde on my, um, you hold shift and hit that key. It's hard to tell it's a tilde on the screen, but trust me, it is. What this does is you just have to come close to the stat affix or explicit or whatever it is, and it will come up. So say if I wanted crit multiplier to cold skills and I type this, they'd say, we don't know what the hell you're talking about. No elements found. If I put a tilde key in there and I type crit multi for cold skills it comes up you just have to get close it just has to contain in that string of text it makes finding things especially say if you're doing um something like a thread of hope jewel or just anything that has passives in radius can be allocated or just where the wording is kind of weird this is an amazing tool to get around that next one of my favorite tips is use jewelers to color your sockets especially if it's on an item that has a hard time rolling a certain color we're going to take this star uh, head helmet. You can see it has evasion rating, which means it's going to prioritize rolling green sockets. If it had a lot of armor, it was going to roll red. If it has a lot of energy shield, it's going to want to roll blue. If it has a combination of evasion rating and energy shield, it's going to want to roll green and blue. But say you really want four blue sockets on this helmet, which is tough. What you can do is you can roll it to two sockets say I want at least two blue sockets and instead of using 120 chromatics which I don't even have at the moment to roll this for more blue sockets and have it very you know a guaranteed three and then you have to get four you can go down and you can just roll three sockets it'll reroll this go back to two and you can just keep using a couple jewelers to do this until you get a blue then you can do the same or the four sockets until it hits blue. Now I might get lucky, but I'm not gonna have us here all day doing this. There we go, four blue sockets, four link sockets. We just did that immediately, and it only costs us a handful of jeweler's orbs. Next tip is always chisel your maps when they are white. If they are white, they get 5% quality per chisel. If they are blue, they get 2% quality per chisel. And if they are yellow or yellow and corrupted, rare, they will get only 1%. So always chisel them at white so it takes four chisels to get to 20% quality and then elk it or alteration it, whatever you are going to do with it. I would roll reflect map and monsters can't be leached on the first freaking reroll of the day. Next up, don't be afraid to use awakened PoE trade. It is a third party program, but it has been used for many years. It is very trusted and it makes your life a ton easier. What it does when you install it and the link is in the description, um, what it's going to do is make it so when you hit control D on something, you can price check it uh, right there in the game instead of going to the trade website. Now, a couple things with this. Notice it will say that um, this has 93 health, which is accurate, and it has that checkbox. If you uncheck and check these boxes, it will not take those certain stats into account. That helps a lot with certain rare items where it has some weird random modifier, maybe, you know, plus 7% to lightning resist. And it's just a garbage mod and you don't want it to take that into consideration with selling it because almost nobody is going to care about that specific mod but notice the numbers here that it's actually using on the right are sometimes different so see this helm has 50 dexterity but it is only registering 
or has 51 dexterity, it's only registering 50. So you can go over and change that to 51. Same with life, it's registering 93. As that at 91, we can change that, and then you can price check it that way. Keep in mind when you install this, it's only going to work if you go on windowed full screen or windowed mode. If you go on full screen mode, it puts it in the background where you cannot see it. So you have to do use this program in windowed mode. If you ever want to change the settings of this program, you can hold shift and hit spacebar. Uh, go to the cog wheel up here, change some of the settings, like what the you know price check hotkey is, and some other things in here. It's very helpful. There's more stuff you can do with it. That's the only thing I'm going to go into. Uh, I guess lastly, make sure that when you are price checking stuff, um, make sure you are on the current league that you are in. It says up here Necropolis, or you can go into the settings and change that to standard, free on standard, or hardcore Necropolis. Next up is set your affinities on your tabs. If you have a tab and say you have delirium orbs that you always want to go to a certain tab when you hold control and left click on it and it goes immediately in the stash, I can say I want this tab right here to be the delirium tab so that when I click control click on a delirium orb, it will go into this tab. Uh, if you have special tabs like blight or something like that, you can right click and this sometimes will be unchecked. Uh, even at the start of the season, this will be unchecked. You have to recheck it to make sure all your blight stuff automatically goes in that tab when you control click. Now you can even do that with the new Necropolis locker for this league. You can see this checkbox is down here. You can also do it with something like the Sanctum uh, Relic locker. They, that also has an affinity tab in the corner now too, which is very nice. So set your affinities for your sanity. Sanity's sake. Another great tip that people usually forget to do is always automate your flasks if it is ideal to do so after you finish the campaign. I believe you get the flask recipes near the end of the campaign as long as you're picking up the crafting recipes and clicking on them. As you go through, you will get it and you can plop a crafting bench down in your hideout and you can see used when an adjacent flask is used, reuse at the end of this flask effect, used when charges reach full. You can do this to any utility flask. You cannot do this on life or mana flask. That would be kind of cheap if you were just constantly regenerating HP because it was auto using it instead of you hitting the button. But used when charges reach full is a very popular one. Reuse at the end of flask effect is a very popular one, especially with certain flasks like Progenesis that last a long time. So you don't need them turning on every single time they're full. You want them to just be on whenever they run out. So you can craft that on a flask. There you go, reuse at the end of the flask effect. So make sure you're automating your flasks just so you aren't pianoing keys the entire time if you're a flask heavy build. Another thing with the crafting bench is use it to fill holes in your defense spots. For example, say if I didn't have max fire and cold resistance, but I had an item that had an open prefix or suffix or something that can get resist, you can plop this in a crafting bench and get fire and cold resist. Plop it on there, whatever the highest roll of the crafting recipe that you got, and there you go, rolled 16%. So now we have ourselves some fire and cold resistance. So use the crafting bench to plug holes, whether it's attributes or resistances or something important. Now, if you have your resistances maxed, remember, having your resistances maxed as close to possible is 99% of the time uh, a big key to PoE. There are already maxed, you can use this uh, for damage, uh, you know, increased cold damage and stuff like that, uh, you know, just to make your build a little stronger. But the general rule is make sure you have your defenses and your resistance capped if you can. For lower and higher stacked items, if you are trying to pull something out, if it is a low number, say you just need 14, you can literally just type the number real quick. 1-4, and you can pull out 14 of an item. Now you can do this for higher stacks. Say I need 3,000, you can type in 3,000 really quick, but keep in mind, this is kind of quick. So if I do it slow, 3-0-0, zero, zero, it's not going to work. You have to type it pretty fast. Another way to do this though, say if I needed 3,000, you can get close to 3,000 and then use the arrow keys to kind of uh, hone in on that. So that is how you deal with higher stacks when you are trading. Next is say you change your gear and all of a sudden you cannot wear one of your gems anymore. Say you lost some strength on that. What you can do is you can go to the any of the vendors and you can take that jewel and you can sell it with an orb of scouring and it is going to de-level it by one. You can see the new strength requirement will be 92. When it was at 100, say you only had 98 strength, you can at least de-level it one and still wear it while you are figuring out your attribute issues. Now with your hideout, make sure you have a decent hideout with the things in it you need. And how you do that when you go to your hideout is you click this button, go to edit, 
and then you can click decorations and you can type in the filter decor search thing things that you're going to want to drag and drop into your hideout like Kirak for Atlas map a uh, point completion uh, Lily she sells all the gems uh, eventually once you do her quest in X6 June if you're doing June stuff sister Cassia is fine Order crafting station obviously your stash guild stash if you're in a guild uh, the crafting bench is also extremely important one and you can even put a map device in your hideout clearly that's how most people run their maps another important vendor recipe is a lot of things you can upgrade three to one so say you do not have this uh, blight tab for your oils you didn't buy it you do not need it I can upgrade it this way by clicking on it and it's going to turn three of these into one of the next tier going from left to right but if you do not have that button you can take three of these oils you can go to any vendor and you can sell them so things that can be upgraded uh, like oils or um, essences or things like that uh, you can just do it that way so that's going to do it for this tips video i'm going to be putting out a handful of them more so make sure you get subscribed uh, throw a like on the video it helps this video a ton not to mention leave a comment if any of these have helped you that also helps a lot uh, get followed over on twitch.tv slash safe on talk where we're streaming all the time and make sure you go and join the discord um, and where a bunch of us are you know always talking builds and stuff a lot of great things also we have a guild now um not exactly yeah g's not the guild hotkey by the way uh it is not filled up yet we have uh three members so if you are interested join the discord uh talk with us in there so i'm going to finally start getting more people in that so if you want to be a part of that you do not have to be a pro you can be new uh not that big a deal uh just let us know in the discord but anyways, yeah, guys, that's going to do it, and thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.